Okay, another related related question. Here is the deal. We have an airplane flying horizontally at an altitude of one mile, and we know that the speed is 500 miles per hour. It passes a radar station, and we would like to find out the rate at which the distance from the plane to the station is increasing when it is two miles away from the station. So let me show you guys two pictures to illustrate the situation. Let's say this right here is my radar station. And let's say here I have my airplane. It looks like this. We know that the distance from here to here is 1 because the altitude is equal to 1. And let's say the plane is going this way, right? So after a few moments, we know that the plane will end up to be right here, but the station is still going to be right here, right? And we know this distance will still be equal to 1, but this distance is going to change, and likewise this distance is going to change as well, because the plane is flying horizontally, of course. Now remember that when we put down the labelings, if it's a constant, if the number doesn't change, you can just write down the number. So the one doesn't change, we can just put that down. But this distance and that distance, as we can see, they change. So we have to label them with variables. So for this one, let me label this with x. This is like y, but it's 1, so you can just put that down. This constant, vertical, so the y. But so for this one, let's put on z, right? So now, with this being done, let's go ahead and put down our information, what we know. Well, based on this, and it says right here the speed of the airplane is 500 miles per hour, so we know that dx dt, because that's how fast the plane is flying, right? This right here will be 500 miles per hour, and you can just write down the number for now. Later on, just put down the units at the end, and let's see what do we want to know. We want to know the rate at which the distance from the plane to the station, so we want to know how fast this is changing, right? So that will be dz dt. And remember, whenever you see the word rate, it's the derivative. And more specifically though, we want dz dt when it is two miles away. So that means when z is equal to two. So write this down, we want this when, let me just put down, when z equals two, right? Now, if we look back to this picture again, which of course we have a right triangle, can we come up with a nice equation for this? Yes. We know that Pythagorean theorem, right? This square plus that square, so I can also put that down. x square plus 1 square is equal to z square, like this. So with this being done, now we can do the work. Let me write this down again. x square plus 1 square is equal to z square. From here, let me differentiate this with respect to time. And remember, x and z, they are both functions of time. So when we differentiate this, we first get 2x and then dx dt, differentiating one square, which is just going to give you zero. That's very nice. And differentiate this with respect to time, we get 2z dz dt, like this, which is very nice. And now, of course, we can divide the two on both sides, so we can cross this out. That's very nice. And we know that x, we don't know yet, actually. We know z is equal to 2, so I will write this down. z is equal to 2. Do we know dz dt? We don't, so I'll just put down dz dt. And again, x, we don't know yet, but do we know dx dt? Yes, that's 500, so I'll just put that down right here. We have the 500 here. But what's x? Well, here's the connection between x and z. Right? So I will just put this down and solve it. We know that when we have z equals to 2, we have the equation x squared plus 1 squared is equal to 2 squared, like this. And just do this real quick. x squared is equal to 1. Well, x squared plus 1 is equal to 4. Minus 1 on both sides, so we get this is equal to 3. Take the positive square root on both sides, so we know x is equal to square root of 3. Very nice. So I come back here, multiply this by square root of 3, like that. And now, have a look here. Of course, to get the dz dt by itself, we can just divide the two on both sides. So we can say that dz dt, it's nice to equal to reduce that, which is 250, and multiply by square root of 3. And don't forget, this is the speed, so this is the mile per hour, which is the unit for that. And that's it.